How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 8. Why I made some more big end brasses, filling the box bed casting, and at last, some painting. But first, the mystery of the big end brasses. Why did I make some more? The answer's quite simple. The brasses that I made in the last video just weren't good enough, and I wasn't happy with them, and it was bothering me, so I threw them away. The main problem was that I used the original holes in this connecting rod to drill the holes in the brasses. As the holes in the connecting rod were not in the right place, then it didn't get any better when I drilled down into the brasses. So what I did today was, first of all, I corrected the holes in the connecting rod. I fitted some step bushes, and then I marked out the position for the holes in the brasses through these step bushes, so obviously the holes are in the right place and I drilled them 3 sixteenths of an inch, which is clearance size for 2BA. In the other brasses, because of the positions of the holes being wrong, I ended up having to enlarge the holes to 7 seconds of an inch, which is no good at all for 2BA. It's a rattle fit. Everything is now OK and the brasses fit very well, so I'm separating them by heating them up with a blow lamp to melt the solder. And what I'm doing here, before any armchair engineers write in, is I'm removing the solder. I am not removing any of the parent metal. I really do enjoy working with these belt sanders, particularly the one inch one that I'm using at the moment. You can do some amazing things with it once you master the art of using it. Now it's time to assemble the bushes and see what happens when I fit them to the crankshaft. The hole in the centre of the big end brasses has been accurately reamed to 11 sixteenths of an inch to fit on the crank pin. First of all, I'm just assembling this to make sure it's the right size. The main bearings are also 11 sixteenths, so I can just slide it onto the crankshaft and check that it's not binding. The other day when I was sorting some papers out in the workshop, I found a drawing for a 5A. This was a stroke of luck really because I didn't think I had one. And when I looked at the drawing, the original big end brasses were not really made to the right size. And that's another reason to justify making a second pair of big end brasses. Any weight that can be saved on the reciprocating components of a model steam engine has to be a good thing, because reciprocating mass equals vibration. In this clip I'm using a pair of Barco spanners to just tighten the nuts and see how everything feels. Whenever I assemble engine parts, I always assemble the parts in a flood of oil. And you've just seen me apply quite a lot of machine oil to the big end brass. This is the top one. I've applied some to the other one that you didn't see me do. And I'm now fitting the lower bending brass in place. And everything is being fitted in a pool of oil. When assembling parts like this, it's quite easy to overlook the oiling. And then when you run the engine, part of it is dry. And suddenly, that part gets very hot. It would be very bad to score a bearing on a brand new engine, or even a rebuilt engine like this one. I can never overstress enough the importance of lubrication on machines like these. It's nothing like a car, where you tip some oil into a sump and an oil pump pumps it round all the bearings. These are very primitive things, and individual bearings need individual oiling. And back in the age of steam, if you didn't oil your locomotive or your steam lorry, it didn't get very far. So don't forget, it's better to over oil than under oil. This clip shows me fitting lock nuts to the bolts on the underside of the big end brasses. Because if these bolts were to work loose and the nuts dropped off, the engine could be very badly damaged. And it's not a good thing if your nuts drop off anyway. And it's especially bad if you're also in a public place at the time. So I'm making sure that the lock nuts are fully tightened. Initially, the big end brasses were a little bit tight on the crank pin. But by moving the connecting rod back and forth for a few minutes, as shown in the video, it soon slackened off. And it feels really good. There's no appreciable play, but it's very firm, which is what you need. It occurs to me when making these steam engine videos that it's an ideal vehicle for double entendres, but I'll try and keep them to a minimum. So just to recap, by moving the connecting rod back and forth in a very vigorous movement, it very soon freed up. And I'm really pleased with this, I just couldn't live with the other brasses that I made. 
And before I forget, I'm fitting the new silicone O-rings to the crankshaft. These are 11 16 internal diameter and will act as an oil seal for the main bearings. Turning my attention now to the box bed, the box bed being the part that the engine sits on. It's still a little bit rough. I've filed it, I've ground it on the belt sander, but it's still a little bit rough in the middle. So what I'm going to do is what everyone does with castings, is I'm going to fill the casting, but I'm not going to use multi-purpose body filler that's in this tin. I'm going to use JB Weld. I really do like this JB Weld product. It's very, very strong. I'm going to use this piece of plastic which was in the body filler tin to spread the JB Weld on the casting. One viewer made a derogatory comment about JB Weld. He said, oh, the only people who use JB Weld or something like that are hammer and file merchants and bodgers. And I don't understand that comment because I find this stuff to be really useful. So far, JB Weld has worked very well for me. I even fixed a broken lug on a steam engine with it. And I'm pleased to say that the repair appears to be 100% successful. I've run the engine and the lug is still firmly secured to the engine with nothing more than JB Weld. You can follow the progress of the box bed in the next episode, but now it's over to the painting. But before the painting extravaganza can start, I have to make a simple but effective mounting base to support the sole plate for when I'm painting it. And that's it from me for the moment. I'll let my healing music carry the rest of the video. Just sit back and relax, listen to the music and watch the painting. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Here we go. <laughs>